<laughs> I shared the stupid Lufia 2 stream picture, the you little hoochies. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I was looking at Instagram earlier and I saw that. I I would love to know uh, what that line really said before it was localized in that way. <laughs> uh, Hoochie Sama. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 122 of Rhythm Encounter, the RPG Fan Music Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Salvato, and joining me today are four excellent panelists, uh, starting with seven Zach Wilkerson. <laughs> Zach Hello. Wilkerson is not a 7 out of 10. I, I think 6.5 is more fair, so yeah. He's on sale right now. <laughs> <laughs> you all need to value yourself more, and also Aww. I'm including myself in that. <laughs> Everybody's okay. digitally patting ourselves on the back. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm ready I like to bring the crew. thunder. So, <laughs> all right, okay. Where where are you on the scale, Wes? Also, Wes is here. Hello, Hi, Wes. hello, everybody. <laughs> ten out of ten. I am gonna Ooh. dunk it through Confidence. and through. All right, I love it. And Steph Sabidlo is also here with us today. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> You're just stirring it. You're just here to stir it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so today we are talking about game defining songs. So these are. Songs that we pick that either define a whole game or maybe just a very important moment in that game. Uh, our rules were like a little bit vague to let people pick them how they want. So I I had trouble for that reason, because like some of the stuff with bigger YouTube views, I was like, maybe I should share that. You know, yeah, but like, I, I was mean, like, oh, this is the iconic theme song. Exactly. I just I just went with the most obvious choices. That's what I do. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, I, what is I feel obvious? like I did. I feel like I did too. But <laughs> I, I, they, yeah, they set I a certain myself. tone. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm excited about it. I I like all the music we have today, and I'm really really curious to hear everyone's like uh, reasoning behind it. Unless unless they all just are like, ah, oh, well, it's it's popular, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So, yeah. Um, if if anyone has anything, I realize this might be answered when we get to the songs, but I always like to ask, like, what drew you to this episode? Um, if there was a song you had in mind from the beginning or you just like this topic, like, what are you here for, basically? I mean, I think it's a great topic uh, because game defining is such a, you know, sort of a nebulous thing, right? So, like, uh, one of my choices only plays twice in the whole game. Uh, maybe giving some things away, people who have some thoughts. And I think that the fact that it's defining is sort of really interesting. Um, and, and just kind of thinking about how, like how games get defined and how music de is defined within those games. I just think it's a, I think it's an interesting topic, even if it brings some of the bigger, more well-known tracks. I'm, I get so satisfied whenever I think of a game and music immediately starts playing in my head. And that's yeah. kind of what it, what drew me here is I, I wanted to be able to get some of those out of my brain and into somewhere that someone else can see them. <laughs> I think that's why we do the podcasting. It's like, <laughs> here's very upfront our thoughts. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I kind of liked, yeah, just how broad it was. You could share a lot with it. Uh, <laughs> anything goes. Yep. I really mulled over it. Like, I, I kind of want to revisit this topic again, too. I'm sure we will one day. One day. I mean, there's so many options out there. So, all right. I mean, my, my reasoning was was a, a combination of a bit of each of you. You know, I mean, there's so many moments in games that really matter to me. And I like the good money moment, the, you know, photo moment. Yeah. And like, they're, they actually they're, really let it resound. <laughs> there are some like, you know, when that song, like I can hear that song like five or 10 years later and I still remember that moment. I'm like, okay, yeah. Like when a song is that important to that moment or a specific thing in a game. So I bet I'll go to the beach and I'll just start hearing fitos, fitos, that. <laughs> I really thought you were going to go with Final Fantasy X on that one. No. When you said the beach. <laughs> no, it's the uh, epic Latin. Nice. It comes to scare me in the background. <laughs> the voices in my head. <laughs> it's cool. The voices in your head are Latin, though. They just speak in Latin. <laughs> That's very RPG of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's jump in then. So, Wes, uh, Wes, you have our first track today, which I believe is an intro song. 
It's not the only reason I put it at the beginning, but it's one of them. It is. And today I brought Transcending Love from Suikoden 3. So good. That's exciting. Our, our first Suikoden 3 track, actually, uh, ever, strangely. Really? It's about time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, after that, my first song is Dynamis from Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. You would uh, share 14. I would share 14. And if you read my review of this soundtrack, <laughs> uh-huh. it's also very obvious that I picked this song. But you know what? I, the people listening to this show haven't necessarily read my review. So I'm hopefully not retreading too much. But uh, you share but, for the post. Yeah, I will. And I like when kind of we're a bit obvious like that. I like when I know who to go to for a certain opinion on things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go listen to Transcending Love and Dynamis. And then we'll come back and talk about them.
So Transcending Love is, I think, the most striking opening theme for a Suikoden game. Not really known for these big, elaborate anime openings like something like a Tales series would be. Um, but that's not the only reason why Transcending Love, I think, is such a great uh, uh, staple to show what Suikoden 3 is all about. Um, Suikoden 3, as, as a part of this larger world that the Suikoden series encompasses, really focuses on tribal matters in a way that the other games don't. You know, each one of these games tries to take a snapshot of a different part of the world. Um, this one deals a lot with the Grassland tribes, who you've like vaguely interacted with in previous games, but this is actually giving you a view of their way of life and all the interconnected groups that work with them. So you've got this kind of tribal beat going that is incredibly satisfying, those really heavy drums, the, the vocals that are unlike something you generally hear in... Yeah. in uh, video game opening. Good nasal. Uh, yes, singing, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not just that. It's also uh, the fact that it kind of goes on this little journey, you know, up and down. It's it's not just one sound throughout. You you get this mm -hmm. rising climax. You get uh, kind of s subdued moments. You get um, heroic moments. You you get a little bit of everything, and it kind of encompasses. The entirety of the game, um, which is something that always impresses me in some kind of theme tune, where you're trying to wrap up like the entirety of what uh, a dozens of hours long RPG is about. Uh, that's not super easy because they're generally about a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, I feel like a lot of our tracks today um, sort of blend different types of sounds. So you've got this like kubushi like trill. Um, at points, you've got sort of those tribal vocals, you've got that drum, and I like the way that it, it will pull in a sound here, it'll pull in a sound there, it'll pull in a sound there, and then they all kind of come together at the end, which, not to spoil Suikoden in 3, but like the ways that it pulls all those threads together I think is really interesting, all while it has this sort yeah. of like really steady beat to it throughout, like it almost feels like a march, but like in a really slow way. That's a good um, way to put it. Which is, which is appropriate given what uh, the, the game is about war. Um, and I just like the different musical stylings that it has um, and how it still like sort of pushes forward and is coherent in a way. Um, I, 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 Suikoden 3 is not one of my favorite Suikoden soundtracks, but I think this track in particular is really strong. I really like how Suikoden really plays up like folksy and worldsy sounds very well. Like there's something very, you know, inspired by a lot of the tracks in it, you know, between very European, kind of very Asian different settings. And like, yeah, this one just kind of fits everything about the world so well. It just feels so well steeped into the Suikoden verse already. Uh, I remember thinking the second game had a really good opening, and then this one just came out and just blew me away. the The animation was just so good. Yeah, in the uh, the, as well. like yeah, that anime opening is. I can't not think the it without best each other. part of the game. I'm yeah. such a sucker for the character designs in Suikoden Three Two, so it it hits me even harder. Oh God! If the game actually had regular anime cutscenes that look like that. I drool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I. I guess I'm probably the only one here who hasn't played this one, but uh, I I enjoyed this a lot. The the vocals are just beautiful, and is I do the first love. I'm hearing it. Yeah, it is. Oh, um, cool. wow. No, I I like it. I, I really like how Zach described it as a march, but this not the same tempo as you expect from something like that. I wish there was a in-game instrumental version of it for cutscenes, actually, because like I don't really think you hear its melody again. I don't oh, think so. That's really that's too I think bad, it would suit yeah. a lot of moments in it. Yeah, I like when yeah. they do that. They take the theme song and kind of roll with it in a few versions in game. Mm -hmm. uh, I always love the title of Exceeding Love too. What a, like it's just kind of great in the way it captures a lot of the Sui Coden feelings. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, many which are usually very big, like dealing with love, loss, you know, loyalty, war, and so on. You know, this song just really encompasses it all. It's a fascinating title given the nature of the game too, yeah. um, and, and kind of thinking about like sort of where it's leading. Uh, yeah. I think I never really thought about it before. I don't think I even knew the title of it before we were pre prepping for this. Really? And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's really cool. That's yeah, because like I guess it starts with the the kind of flame champion who's kind of dealing with his love story, and then if you get your super final mega bonus chapter, you kind of have their story kind of play huh. out as well. Yeah, I didn't even think yeah, I didn't even that. think about the bookends. Yeah, that's wild. Dang, that's a really good song. I was actually, I'm always happy to yeah. hear it again. And I usually like sharing it on our social pages as well. And a lot of people just really resonate with this one. So I'd say, yeah, that's a pretty good game defining track. Especially if, like you say, you're not really keen on the rest of the soundtrack. I admit, I like 
Sukum oh, to a lot sure. more. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this is the one highlight piece for sure. It's a banger, for yeah. sure. <laughs> is this, I, I'd have to bring up the page to look, but when I was looking it up, it's like, I don't remember. Did they, is the composer of this one, did they do anything else in the soundtrack or just the opening? Yeah, was it one of those kinds I of think, cases? I think it is, but I, I, I know now that I'm saying it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm They've usually done really good at doing well. those opening themes. I am such a sucker for four in the like kind of you know guitar, the like nylon string guitar thing it's got going. It's really pretty. I don't even remember that, but I need to go listen to it now. Yes, please. <laughs> and accordion, because you know I'm a sucker for accordion. <laughs> Yeah, let me look. Let me see if I was just making it up. Yeah, you have to watch the anime opening. It's so beautiful. It really is great. Yeah. You get to see a duck be animated, a duck sergeant be animated. I mean, that's pretty great. Sergeant right? Joe is fantastic. <laughs> he's he's an immaculate. immaculate I don't understand being. if he looks knows how he looks a little kind of goofy, a little duck on the side of the duck helmet. <laughs> but I'm glad he does. And there's so many cool ones. There's like the dog person I really like. Uh, Mudo, I think. I don't know. God dang it. I really hope they uh, plan to HD this game in the future. I'd love it. Well, at least yeah. there's that fan mod, right? Yeah, when I yeah. saw the, that announced, I was like, oh my gosh, they're remaking Suikoden 3. Nope. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I know. I baby. thought the same thing. Like, the whatever site we were looking at, like, the, the way the headline was written made it sound yeah. like it was a, an official project. Yep. Um, I don't know. It looks good, though. I feel like that's a that's a big undertaking, so we'll see how long that actually takes them to do, but it looks it's pretty nice so far. It's a game with a really... They've put out, like, like, a few things, though. Like, I don't know. They seem to work fast. It's a, it's a game with a really defined style. So HD Remaster 4 works really nicely. Good. Very much. They, they cleaned it up nicely. Like, it's actually a pretty great undertaking. So it's good that, you know, this one is kind of getting preserved. God, Sukoden HD is getting such a great treatment, though. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that one coming out. I'll actually play the game. I think, I think. Sui Coden 3 needs the love a lot more in a way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to my thing where I'm going to try not to retread my review. And although I intentionally didn't reread my review for this, but um, although I'm also going to try to not spoil anything. And Zach's sitting here like, how are you going to not spoil anything? You're talking about that song. I, I, um, I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. I didn't do it before. Um, Watch the video. Like, is that the actual clip of the scene it plays in? <laughs> yes. Although, if you don't have the context, it probably wouldn't mean anything to you. Yeah, I didn't have a clue what was going on. It was just, yeah. wow, wow, sky of gorgeous fuchsia and violet galaxies swirling is yeah. so beautiful. <laughs> this no, music is so um, beautiful. No, there's, there's so much buildup uh, yeah. to everything in Endwalker. I mean, it really, it, it is exactly what they said it was going to be, where it was the culmination of the story. They started in a realm reborn and sort of in 1.0. So it's like, you know, nearly a decade of, of plot that you've been playing and the way it culminates. And, you know, we're so used to in, in RPGs, and I'm not saying this is always the case, but, you know, usually the buildup is like this, you know, big battle and there is a big battle and there is a big boisterous song. But like in this one, just the, the way the story, I'm really dancing around the topic here, uh, mm -hmm. plays out and what <laughs> Dynamis is uh, in the game, what it means. Um, I really love that as as exciting as the ending sequence in that game is and the last battles and the, the song for that is amazing. Like there is a big epic battle, but the big, the biggest moment for me, and this is actually what inspired me to write the soundtrack review because I was trying to find an angle for it. And the angle for it was, was this because it, it was not the big moment. It wasn't the big battle. It wasn't anything like that. It was just the emotion of this, there, there's there's this shift that happens with this really important character, mm -hmm. and just the the payoff of that of that moment, which is what's in that video that we linked, um, yeah. just hits me so hard. Um, it's almost it's, cathartic. It's yeah, I mean, it's so beautiful. It's like because everything you go through, especially in the like the last area and sequence leading up to this, it's like it's it's rough. I mean, like it really like emotionally wrecks you. Um, so <laughs> when you get this resolution, or at least the start of a resolution with this character, like, so like it's become like such this hopeless situation. You're like, how are we ever going to make things right for her? And then find some way to do it and get through to her. And it's just gorgeous. Um, 
I think that's as detailed as I can be without saying anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that that's it's accurate, and I think the music um, reflects it really well. It's because I, I I don't know if it's actually two hand piano, but the way that there's sort of like this um, higher higher pitch piano that's still gentle, but sort of this underlying sort of like rhythmic rolling music. It yeah. almost feels like um, it almost feels like a, a an almost a force that is like tying it together and almost like this life force that is tying it together. And I think that the way that the strings work in this uh, song is really fascinating too. Like it, it, the strings are almost percussive. They're almost what gives it that rhythm later as well. And how those two things are sort of talking to each other. And if you think about the nature of that moment, like there is a gentility to it and there's almost an empathy to the sound of the piano in particular. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, really Ed Walker is about empathy right um and uh, in all its different forms <laughs> um but I, I think that the gentility and the beautiful beauty of that the piano in particular that sort of just runs underneath it and it's sort of tying everyone together almost like this life force which is very appropriate i think given uh the nature of the song and the title of the song um yeah i, I it's it's funny i i would not have chosen this as the game defining song but i I would have, when I thought about it more, I was like, yes, that mm. is the defining scene for this game. Um, and it's the defining song um, for the sort of the philosophy of the game in general. So I think it's a great choice. Thank you. What What would yours have been? Like, what, what else? What would you have picked? Mm, otherwise? No, I, you asked that question and now I'm blanking on the title. Um, <laughs> oh, you put it out there. I was curious. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I understand. Uh, what's the what's like the, the theme that plays over the. Uh, the trailer footfalls. Um, yeah, yeah, Footfalls yeah, is probably the one yeah. that I would have chosen mm -hmm, as the yeah. defining song, but I think, like I said, I think this is a better choice um, because it really defines uh, the philosophy of the game. Well, thank you. Yes. Also, it gets me all teary-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting there trying to remember which right. song is Dynamis, and then I started listening to it, and the the main theme of it kicked in, and I was like, oh, I'm a little teary-eyed. Why did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was really soothing and healing. Like, it's very pleasant. <laughs> I didn't know what to click when I heard it. Like, it's kind of nice going in completely blind on some of the, uh, you know, the options that you really don't know. And I was pleasantly surprised. Usually I hear a lot of the rocking out stuff with uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, yeah. So I didn't expect this. It was very, very pretty. I'm glad you liked that. Yeah. yeah. That is nice. Okay. Go ahead. No, Sorry. it's fine. I was just going to say that I, I think that the way that Sokin does like to rock out so often and the fact that he uses... Uh, the, the percussive elements that he often uses in his other types of music in a really different way here in a softer way, I think makes it even more interesting. So I agree with you. All right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. Um, <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad out. it worked out. I don't know. Like no, for Mike, this, you for this bad. topic. Yes. <laughs> no, that was great. Yeah. Um, let's get to one of your songs, Steph. Uh, what is your first song today? Um, do, do, do all the theme of Grandia. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't even completely beaten this game all the way, but oh my goodness, I love, love listening to this track. And I, I enjoy it too. I kind of um, like having a Grandia up right against Ark the Lad. I feel like we got the two like boy <laughs> kids going out there and committing to crazy adventures. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, uh, hey, Wes, uh, what's your song? <laughs> Speaking of the theme block here, yep. uh, the Ark the Lad theme uh, from the Ark the Lad series is my pick. And yeah, they fit together real nice. Yeah, I thought so too. I could see a crossover game between them. Hmm? It, would, it would feel right. Justin the Lad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go Just listen. Doesn't flow. Yep, let's go listen to uh, theme of Grandia and the Ark the Lad theme, and be right back.
Society is like that game version of like a bunch of Ghibli films at once. Like there's a little bit of Castle in the Sky in there. There's a little bit of, you know, like, I don't know, just a full bunch of them kind of dealing with magic, technology, characters, wacky characters you meet on your journey. Um, and it has a great vibe of, you know, you and your friends going on an adventure. And it's so well encapsulated in the song. There's so much spirit and, you know, passion and just big, big adventure feelings. <laughs> uh, I sometimes mix the song up with like Skies of Arca uh, Arcadia theme or even, yeah, like the Ark the Lad one, which, you know, similar to Nail is that like we're going, we're going out there kind of climbing the mountain kind of music. Uh, and I did play the games around the same time too. Uh, that was a really good summer, if I recall. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know, I thought it was a really well-composed song. Uh, I love how it sweeps through, you know, so many different sounds and emphasizes different instruments as it goes on. Like, there's, you know, a whole bunch of strings at the start, and then it kind of breaks into a bit of a rock and roll bit. Um, I really just don't have much to add. I just think it's all around just the first thing I thought of when I came to this topic was, oh yeah, it's the Grandia theme, you know? It's grand, like the Grandia theme. You know, I got no notes. Uh, I picture just so many colors and feelings when I hear it. You know, that adventure, that spirit, bravery, sincerity, beauty, wonder, meeting, and just all that rush of being young and dumb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this really applies, you know, to Grandia's own spirit through the characters and story and through Justin just kind of being this kind of wacky kid, uh, you know, who kind of grows a bit of a heart and a bit of a brain as the story goes on. Uh, but the game has such a good gooey inner core. Uh, it's a miracle they actually got this much personality out of a PS1 game, in my opinion, or sorry, a Sega Saturn game, I guess, uh, which notoriously weren't too great for that at the time. And, you know, again, I just like how this song really reflects just how much character this game has. That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up like Studio Ghibli movies because I almost I didn't end up putting that in my notes, but I almost did because I, <laughs> I get that same vibe, too. Um, yeah. You know, it's just it's one of those just really great examples of that, like innocent, free spirited, you know, hey, let's go on an adventure kind of RPG that uh, yeah. ga Game yeah. Arts was just so good. at. We making. don't need riches and power when we got our friends here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, that, that was just fight those pesky adults <laughs> between that and Lunar. Like, it's definitely just that, that vibe yeah. is something I associate with game arts so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I know the game has more depth than that. You know, by the end, it's not all all just like, oh, anyway, we're just going to go over here and do this now and just drift around. But um, those are the best parts of the game, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that, though. Like, just that, that feeling of like that genuine excitement and like, mm -hmm. you know, carefree. It just I, I love that in a game. You and start the game collecting a pot lid to <laughs> fight as a shield. I mean, it's so silly. Yeah, and and I love that 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 really is captured in this music because, like, if yeah. the game had that tone and the music didn't match it, it, it wouldn't work as well. So yeah, um, I, I think this really was a good choice because this really does capture that feeling musically in the game. So. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like the, the beginning is like uh, an old timey, like, hey, news of the world, like, you know, at the beginning of Citizen Kane. <laughs> and then like it that. moves into like this funky, like 70s disco style music. And then it bit. like has like that sad ish sort of violin section. That's and sincere kind of. Yeah, uh, there's a sincerity to it. Um <laughs> And the way it brings all those melodies together at the end, um, I think is really great. I mean, I think that um, it, it almost sounds like an opera overture because it pulls so many different styles of music. It, it, it almost sounds like like seven different songs. And I think it's really cool the way they're able to blend all of them at the end. And they have like sort of that consistent melody, but like it's still really different throughout. And the game, despite the fact that it is still, it is so simple on, it, on its face to some degree, like it has it because ha it, it, you're traveling to these different towns and you're talking to these different people and they all have different vibes and they all have different feels um and i think that uh, it has this to almost, incorporate a lot like the yeah game do. yeah this almost like overture like uh style that they're using here i think yeah. it's really great i've never really thought about it uh too much before today um but i i, I think it's great i love the horns at the end too <laughs> <laughs> yeah the horns are very powerful yes <laughs> yeah no i like this one I didn't capture that 70s angle, but yeah, now I have it on right now, and I'm like, yeah, I, I hear that. I'm hearing it so strongly in the in the percussion section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I, I could see Iwadare, like, you know, lining up the timeline. He was probably influenced by a lot of 70s stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can see it. was so much fun, too. Yeah, you could just, like, see him, like, having fun while he's making the song, too. Um, yeah. Oh, for sure. 
yeah. and probably incorporating stuff he might have heard when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. You know, yeah. that kind of bombastic sound and that kind of slight disco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, well said. And I love just how forward the strings are. It really belts it out. <laughs> kind of lets it sit with you for a little while longer. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't go soft. <laughs> It screams adventure like it's Justin at every point in this game. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so how do we feel about Ark the Lad? I feel pretty good about Ark the Lad. I don't Ark know. Lad. Maybe that should be obvious. I mean, probably. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those those games in that era that I actually missed. That was back when I did play a ton of RPGs, um, but I just I never made it to Ark the Lad. So in yeah, they localized us. the whole series a little bit a little bit late. Uh, Working Designs got their hands on it and released this six disc magnum opus. Um, the ser- it's th- This intro is kind of an interesting. It almost works as a counterpoint to part of the series. Because um, especially once you get to like Ark the Lad 2 and Ark the Lad 3. Um, but even, even sometimes throughout Ark the Lad 1, um, there is a dark tinge to a lot of this series. Yes. Bad people do very bad things. Yeah. Um, Characters who, you know, you learn to love in one game are portrayed as villains for a little, for, for like parts of the future games. Um, you're never quite sure, you know, where allegiances lie, but ultimately at its core, it is a heroic fantasy. And that theme song screams heroic fantasy, like at the top yeah. of its lungs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it works almost as a way to like remind you of, of the tone of the game, even when things get dark, to remind you that, hey, things are going to, you know, push through to being heroic. You're, you're going to find, you know, some hope, some path forward again, um, which is really a, a big part of Ark the Lad. It's, it's very much based, like hope is a big theme in Ark the Lad. Um, and I feel like this super optimistic, super brassy, super like PS1, we just got the keys to the kingdom with CD audio. Let's, let's blow it out as best as we can. <laughs> um, which That's I, what I, I put think... on here is that it's just triumphant. Like, it just feels so good to listen to. And you're right. Like, the story gets surprisingly dark. And this kind of could be, like, a very good positive sound against some of the harder parts, which is, you know, very on point for RPG thematic storytelling. It's it's kind of like reminding you that you're in the right, despite how <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> how things could... can get kind of murky throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful game series. This theme or variations thereon are with it throughout the entire series. Which is why I just gave it the the entire Arc the Lad series, <laughs> um, especially like Twilight of the Spirits. Um, <gasps> it gets into some some real murky territory. Arc the yeah. Lad two and Twilight of the Spirits are the two that I think really get deep into there. And this theme helps you <laughs> helps you yeah. kind of keep your moral center. Straight up, Twilight of the Spirits is one of my favorite game soundtracks, and I feel like I have no one to tell that to. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's I can't so believe how good it you is. You now have located someone. <laughs> <laughs> I found my party. You, uh, yeah, landed. no, just like there's so many inspirations in it, and it kind of has some of that electric guitar in it, too, that kind of rocks out with you. Like, this is a really good uh, series for soundtrack. If it's hard to play now, then at least go listen to the soundtrack. It's like very good stuff. Yeah. I, I could have picked like a half dozen different songs for any individual Arc the Lad game, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, one of my notes says, you really feel like a young, spunky boy who can achieve his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, it's really funny because I, I, I have not played Arc the Lad. I, it's always, you know, one of the games that I've wanted to. And oh. I, 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 I totally get like this John Williams vibe to it throughout. Yeah. Like I feel like it feels like Indiana Jones. It feels like star Wars. Um, but there are, there are some moments like there's this spot like halfway through where there's almost like this, like swirling, like woodwind section that keeps yeah. like rising and falling. And it almost feels like that thing that you were talking about, Wes, and I'm probably English teaching this, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> It, it almost feels like the music is sort of like keeping that woodwind section down as it like keeps pressing forward in this like almost marching band, um, you know, brass heavy thing. It the does love its brass. Yeah. And, and, so and as the woodwinds are trying to like kind of swell up and it so- sounds kind of ominous, eventually it resolves out and it ends in triumph. Um and again, I could be making that up. I really like that section with the woodwinds. So I wanted to make something out of it. And that's what I wrote down. So it makes sense given what you guys have said. 
That's actually a good way to put it. I like when, yeah, music especially does a lot of that resolving. And especially in those big thematic openings, when you want to capture a lot of feelings, you might go from one kind of bombastic sound to something more sincere to something maybe with a villain. And you got that, yeah, brassy sound to kind of sound more menacing. Yeah, like it has a lot of work to do. It has a lot of pull to to cover or sorry, a lot of like ground to cover. Very John Williams. <laughs> I'm not yeah. usually big onto the orchestral pieces, but I don't know. This one speaks to me. It's impossible to hate. <laughs> I really want to say it's really impossible to hate. It's just so much fun. On that note, I I, I really, really, I, I scrolled down because, you know, for anyone listening, like we share YouTube links a lot of times for the songs on here. Um, please tell me you guys looked at the one and only comment in seven years on this video. <laughs> I did. I just upvoted yep. it. <laughs> um <laughs> so I just I'm just going to read it here because you know we're not sharing the YouTube links in the show notes, but uh, this is this is Snipe MD posted two years ago. <laughs> Quote: Video games aren't art. Attributed to some stupid person. That's it. That's the only comment on this video after seven years is just someone saying this is art. And I like I'm it. the twelfth thumb up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that amuses me so much. Um, all right. Well, I, I hope that, you know, at some point, Sony figures out something to do with those PS1 classics that oh, went away God. with PS4, because, you know, having these available again, like they were back in the PS3 era, along with so many others, uh, would be fantastic. Um, unless unless they're on Spotify, actually. Well, I mean, the, I mean, the games. I mean, yeah. unless you can get. Yeah, I know. Are, are there PS1 games on like the whatever PlayStation now or no? There are a few on on whatever tier of PlayStation Plus now, but yeah. it's nowhere near the collection they had. Yeah, that's too bad. Like, they're there. It's just kind of sad having those things, like, sitting there. <laughs> Not being available. It's like, that could make you money. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, we got to talk about great game preservation on here more. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to tie that into Star Ocean, but... Uh, <laughs> hey, Star Ocean is hanging on by a thread. It's, it's being <laughs> preserved. It will be released very soon here, or maybe already has. I don't know what the timing is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, anyway. And so. yeah, we got Star Ocean 2R coming out, so I really wanted to pick that. Even if it's not the game definer of all game definers, I kind of wanted to highlight the fact that the most popular game is getting a re-release. But, but you you have a song from Star Ocean 3. I do yeah 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 because it's so good yeah. I'm sorry that's okay so what is <laughs> yeah. it uh oh it's the star ocean fever so it's the theme song that appears in basically all the star ocean games but this is a very funky cool jazz version that is played in uh star ocean 3 till the end of the time awesome i'm so excited i hope you guys liked it oh yeah it's a lot of fun i mean like it because you haven't heard it you yet have not heard it no <laughs> um so after that yeah. we finally get to zach <laughs> Thank you well, for being patient. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we haven't done any of his yet. Not yeah. yet, not yet. Uh, so I brought Battle 3 from Lufia 2, which is um, basically the battle that plays, or the, the music that plays over some of the major boss battles in the game. Sweet. We, we've not had enough Lufia on here, so that is We cool. are currently streaming it, too, so tune in to yes. Twitch. I don't know if we'll be streaming it when people listen to this episode, but there's a chance it would overlap. It's a pretty long game. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, let's go listen to the jazz version of Star Ocean Forever and Battle 3 from Luffy at 2.
All right, hit, hit him. Um, so Star Ocean Three specifically was one of those like kind of early PS2S uh, soundtracks that went pretty hard. Uh, like there's real band and like real orchestra and you know uh, instruments, and it's not just all synthesizer. Um, so you hear the Star Ocean Forever theme at least once per game. It's more or less you know the game series' main theme. And uh, I really wanted to celebrate Star Ocean right now because, yeah, Star Ocean 2 R is happening like right now and it's very exciting looking. Uh, funny enough, I did not choose the music from that though. Uh, but I love the way this song sounds. The song, this music sounds like the, like, we saved the world after party kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it flexes a range of jazz. Uh, the piano throughout kind of softens things up a little bit with added chimes, you know, to kind of feel a little bit more spacey and pretty and more sweeping. Uh, and then the trumpets come back in to be loud and have fun again. And, you know, then you hear a bit of an oboe in two minutes in, which just sounds really cheeky. And you know, like, I don't know, it's just doing so much crazy stuff. That's why I had to pick this version, just because there's just so much happening here and done to the main theme of the game. Um, so about the three minute mark, you actually finally hear the Star Ocean for oh, Forever theme that da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na, da -da -da. and it's got like the big symbols to give it that epic crash as well. And then it breaks down into another party, party hard mode. Like I can't describe the song. It just kind of goes up and down all over the place. <laughs> Um, you know, it does a lot of that, you know, here's a sound and then here's another sound to respond to that, you know, so the piece kind of speaks to each other. Um, you know, so it goes from like loud jazz to kind of something more space opera-y. And I love that. Uh, the final minute then goes into a more of a percussion version of the Star Ocean Forever theme. It kind of sounds more like, I uh, like classical, you know, orchestration to it. it sounds more like normal video gaming is what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I, I, like, you know, some people hate jazz, so sorry to them or you know maybe they just don't like Motoi Sakuraba's version of jazz and that's that's actually fair uh, but I really love this version there's just so much happening and uh, and also point out uh, Star Ocean 3 is one of those one in a million games that actually has a jazz final boss theme uh, in the vein of Moody Goddess which is a really cool sounding boss theme I really recommend it uh, funny enough, though, you will not hear this song, uh, you know, unless you're obviously streaming for the soundtrack, uh, but you will not hear the song unless you beat the game on the higher difficulties. <laughs> so most likely you will not even hear it. That's um, Where is it playing? Otherwise, you just get the game's, yeah, you just get the game's main theme. Like, you know, you have a singer do it. Uh, Misia, who's, she's really good, but I don't really care for it. It's more standard video game ballad kind of ending music. This is just so much more fun. <laughs> no, this is great. So, like, where where does it play in the game then? Just at the, like, uh, sorry, at the very ending, if you beat the game at the final oh. difficulty, it plays over the credits. <laughs> what, a, what an odd little, like, yeah. musical Easter egg, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Spending a lot of time on a song that most people will not hear in game. And for people who hate jazz, to reward them with a song they won't even like is just so sad. <laughs> I think that's kind of beautiful, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, the game with MP death will, uh, you know, <laughs> hurt you even harder at the end then. Well. Even if I had ever finished Star Ocean 3, which I never will, as I wrote yeah. in a feature earlier this year, <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't have played it on the hardest difficulty, so I w really would not have known this was in there. It's uh, like normally a hard game, so yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, a, what an interesting thing to be on the actual soundtrack. Like this this really feels like, like oh, well, we did the, you know a jazz or range album. It's like, no, this is actually in the game. It's just yeah. a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I wasn't paying enough attention and I, thought for sure this must just be a jazz arrangement of the song. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I just found out yeah, while we were recording this actually is in Star Ocean 3. <laughs> yes, I knew. Yeah. <laughs> the the I, vibe between this song and the actual like ballad sung by Misia is so different. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, like hers is just kind of a pretty song and mm -hmm. you know, this is just like trumpets. <laughs> The trumpet. And, like, the, 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 <laughs> oh, no. and the, the original version that's like, uh, you know, bleeps and bloops um, yeah. is is so different, too. Like, I I can't believe they've taken something that was that small and turned it into like this, like seven minute jazz epic. It <laughs> yeah. sounds like uh, a Glenn Miller on crack um, <laughs> sort of thing. Like, it, it's it, it's amazing. Um, like and how they have like that those ocean sounds in the middle and somehow makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, like, I, I made so many notes here about, like, how much I loved the upright bass at the beginning, yeah. uh, the harp towards the end, those sort of pushing horns at the end. Like, it just, it's just so fun. It opens so strong, too, that yeah. bum, bum, bum. 
yeah you know like it wants you to dance it wants you to boogie yeah. and any other old timey <laughs> <laughs> swing your finger around in the air like your grandpa do <laughs> 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 um yeah uh, i'm happy if you haven't heard this before because oh i love it to death that was a trip <laughs> right <laughs> yeah always one of my favorite parts of doing this show is like discovering things on my own yeah um, oh truly yeah it's so easy to get caught in your own bubble of music and, you know, kind of be apprehensive about new stuff. And no, I, I just get blown away by stuff people share here all the time. Oh, yeah. And I, I think a lot of times, like, vi like when video games try to do jazz stuff, they try to make it still so close to, like, the video gaminess of it originally that it doesn't ever really have its own identity. But this song 100% has its own identity. Um, and I think it's it's fantastic because of it. Yeah. It feels yeah. like Sakuraba just had free reign to do whatever he wants, and he yeah. does better yeah. in those situations. I think when he's got a live, uh, some live <laughs> musicians to work with, and he's doing he's tales music. Because I, uh... right, <laughs> yeah. that, that's the thing. You know, I, I know I've said it on the show before. It's like, I, 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 and I'm guilty of it. Like I used to think his stuff was samey too, but that's before I knew that he had such. He often has such specific directions, especially on tales. Where like, no you're going to make it sound like this because that's what you're here for. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. Um, but like, I love it when he gets to do stuff like this. Like it's, he's just consistently surprising me. Um, and this is what, 20 years ago now? I just, I never knew about it. So. I kind of, he seemed to have done it like quite a few jazz tracks at this point. So like, you know, I wonder, you know, if he has a big interest in jazz or if he decided to pick it up over the course of his career or, I don't know. I wish we knew more about some of these musicians really. <laughs> I have to look that up now. Yeah. You know, if I if I still had that connection, this is I'm, I'm not trying to name drop or anything, but I, I am going to say I had this very weird period many many years ago in like the early two thousands, <laughs> oh. uh, because of my connection to RPG fan that there was a there was an online music um, store um, like this this lady like would resell you know it basically whatever it was a it was a music um, retailer. Um, but like she would work with a bunch of composers and there was a very brief period where uh, Sakuraba's English website was actually something I designed. Uh, really? Yeah. What? I mean, it wasn't <laughs> like it's nothing. It's nothing fancy now. Um, and it, I'm, I don't think anything I did was the same because it was like 20 years ago. But yeah, I mean, like it was a very, very small thing because like the, the Internet was much smaller 20 years ago. Um, but there were a bunch of composers where I did a very basic, like, here's the Japanese website. And it was like, here's like 10 albums. Like, there wasn't a lot to it. And just yeah. like the idea was like each composer had like a, she would like say like, okay, well, let's get a color scheme and some other stuff. Uh, uh, Sakuraba did not have a specific color he liked. Uh, so the color scheme for that was rainbow. Um, anyway, it was fun. Um, I, if I could link you to it, I would, uh, yeah. e even though I, it's not my finest work. Uh, now looking back, but I had fun with it. You got better over the course of 20 years? Yeah, weird, huh? Who would have guessed? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. What a Cinderella really story. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Cinderella stories. Yeah. Uh, it's Lufia 2. I mean, it kind of comes back from being a not very good game to a really good game from 1 to 2. Okay. Maybe. Uh, whatever. Lufia 2 is uh, ridiculously cool. Oh, Lufia like... 2 is, is amazing. We never got it uh, in the States, right? Yeah, we did. In North America. Oh, no, yeah. which one? I Sorry. had my $90 copy of that game because oh. it was absurdly expensive yep, when it yep. came out. <laughs> but, like, no, I feel like it's almost kind of underrated at this point. Like, oh, for sure. More people actually talk about, you know, like, the big ones, Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI and all that. But, like, this one's just not quite the same status. But I think it's worth it. Yeah, I, um, I, I love Lufia, too. Uh, it was, like, one of the first... Uh, game journals i did uh, on retro encounter and <laughs> it, it, it's odd to choose a uh, to choose a battle theme i think uh for a game defining song uh but when i think of lufia 2 i think of those battles against the sinistrals um those big giant sprites um and how imposing they are and just like how it feels like you're really battling almost like this god um yeah. and i think that the the the, like the opening notes of this song anytime I hear them I'm like I am now listening to the rest of this song 
um, because it just it just I'm not going to try to reproduce them, but like it's just so cool. And I like the way that like it uses that sort of like synthy sound um, to make it feel ominous. You see this giant sprite get this like no 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 I'm I'm trying I shouldn't try um, <laughs> and, and with this this synthy sound and then like the horns come in and they get a little bit stronger, um, almost like you're like pushing back against it. And like that drum beat that's just like a bump, 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 bump going the whole time. Like it, it just makes these fights that already would feel epic so much more epic. I always feel like I can't say a lot about like, uh, I don't know, uh, chiptune type things, but um, I, I really like the song. <laughs> I, I it's really so is... crunchy about the electric guitar yeah, on yeah. SNES games. I mm -hmm. love it. <laughs> it actually, I, I didn't even put this on my notes because I just thought about it uh, while listening again, but. Uh, it really makes me think of some of the battle music in Mystic Quest. Um, yes. Just, I'd love, I, I don't know why I have the soft spot. The way like it plays this, with SNES instrumentation really yeah, comes off the yeah, same way. Well. Like this, this crunchy 16-bit like rock battle music is just always so fun to me. Yeah, they just don't make them like that anymore in a way. Mm -mm. <laughs> I feel you can actually say. <laughs> um, and plus, like, I, I, if, I guess if you played if you played both games, obviously there's like... I know I know very loosely how this works. Like I know how Lupia One opens and all that, but like, you know, it's it's my understanding is it's quite a build up, right? Like if yeah. if you play Lupia One and you go through the game and then play two, like right. there's You know how it's gonna end. Yeah, you know how it's gonna end, but like it's obviously like there's a lot you're going through a lot to get to this point to fight these mm -hmm. guys. So. You mentioning the sprites was actually really good because I can't think of Lufia 2 without it because they're so well drawn. Yeah. And like you said, they're very imposing. So yeah, hearing this music, this kind of real cool SNES brand of rocking out for battles and those kind of big, kind of chunky, cool looking sprites are just such a good match. <laughs> I remember I had the MIDI of this one like way back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of my first Napster finds. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> It, it was probably one of the things on the uh, you know, MIDI player on RPG fan in the late 90s there. That's a distinct possibility. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't think I have those files or I would check. I, I put in my notes, I would have picked Battle 2. Really? <laughs> I love that one. Oh, I think it's great too. It's just yeah, just the, one the that trumpet. really hits me. Yeah. I don't know. I got to say it again. The trumpet. But yeah, no, this one is so good. What impresses um, me about, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm over. I was, I was just going to say what, what impresses me so much about this is that there's a progression to it. Yeah. Like a lot of times battle themes just have this one driving melody and they want to get right back to it as soon as they can, because this mm. is the action-y part. But no, this one actually has proper progression and some real variation, even though it's using the same instrumentation throughout. And it feels like that, that drum beat is holding it all together. But uh, I don't see that in many boss themes of the era. Yeah, I can see that. There's, there's, yeah, like, um, what do you call it? A good, like, kind of build up and resolution in this one. Yeah, I feel like the way they've managed to use different kinds of sounds, even though they're using a synthesizer, is really great. Yeah. I think you shared the only, like, uh, bit tune one mm -hmm. on our list, too. So I actually kind of appreciate that we kind of get a bit more of a angle on this. It's so good. Like I said, that, that SNES style of rocking out on chip tunes is so fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. One day, one day. I actually started playing, um, I, I start too many games, but I did actually start playing the first Lufia a few months ago. Oh, um, don't. I don't, no. I mean, shouldn't I though? <laughs> shouldn't I? To, I no. No? It, it's got like some almost Final Fantasy like mechanics, like Final Fantasy 1 NES style mechanics in the fights. Like I, I enjoyed it a lot when I had like 12 RPGs to play. Those were all the <laughs> RPGs that existed, but <laughs> Lufia 2 it. is amazing. Lufia 1, you get maybe the slightest bit of additional context but uh, about Lufia herself I suppose but that's it okay so you don't consider it required playing to play two no zero percent cool well then I'll just play two because yeah. that's really the it's one I want to play way I, better game see it's I honestly aged pretty well too it's just yeah. a lot of fun I, it's just so fast-paced it's fun see yeah. I for way too long uh, I've been wanting to play Fantasy Star 4 because I never have and I keep telling myself like well I have to the others i know they're like connected and not but... four is the only one i've played and it was just fine without the others <laughs> just really uh tempering the expectations here <laughs> i mean i did play the ages version of one like that was fun because oh. it, it let me like speed up things and like not worry about the four grinding. has a lot of references back to one so okay i, I, it works I think out. that 
two and three are not necessary to enjoy four. Yeah, I I really liked the the treatment they gave to one in that series, so I kind of wish they would have done ages versions of two and three. Yeah. Um, but they anyway. get me to maybe play two because I'm like I don't want to draw a map, so I'm not going to. Right. That. Yeah. I mean the maps, <laughs> the maps, and the encounter rate are nuts in that yeah. game. No thanks. No. Anyway, I'll play Luffy too then. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so our last block is uh, myself and Zach. So my second track today is Weight of the World slash The End of Yorha, um, a different version of Weight of the World from what we've had on before from Near Automata. And then Oh, I'm technically wrong. It wasn't our only chiptune song. <laughs> and technically. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. And Zach, what's your other song today? And I brought Carrying the Weight of Life from Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Well, I can't wait to hear you talk about this one. <laughs> I know I know how much this one means to you. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Let's go listen to Weight of the World and Carrying the Weight of Life. Wow. That's a, that's a heavy block.
All right. So there are many, many versions of Weight of the World. Um, yeah. But the, is this, is, I don't know if this, I was going to say this is the original. Is it the original? I don't know. This version <laughs> is. Copy of a copy of a copy. Is yeah. among my favorites. Um, yeah. The, the the that like crunchy lo-fi beginning I think is like a cool throwback to like the hacking sections of the game, um, and then that tr transition into uh, Janique Nicole's voice just it gets me every time. Although every what a transition to yeah, like I mean like everything in the song gets me every time, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean well I'm not gonna I'm not breaking any ground or shocking anyone to say that it's you know the the E ending of the game uh, that made the song like really really like stick in my head but mm -hmm. um i spent <laughs> and this, and like my other song like i i know this game is even older than end walker so I, i'm sure I, there's not a whole lot of people that would be super spoiled but i'm still not going to say a lot about it but basically the best especially a game like that you, it's best for not that to i don't word. want to because like yeah. i i somehow went into that game blind even though i played it like five years later um oh, and cool. i wouldn't <laughs> i would recommend anyone play that play it that way yeah. Um, but like I spent so much time trying to get through that like there's this one shooting sequence towards the end and I'm not going to say what the deal is but um, you know there's there's a musical shift when you decide when you realize that oh you're doing it wrong uh, you have to do this other thing or you need to do this other thing um, and when the, when that that music shift happens it's such a moment um, and I realize, by the way, for any of my RPG fan friends, all of you and anyone else listening, that yes, it's very predictable that I am I was playing a game and insisting on doing it myself without asking for help. Um, <laughs> you don't need to call it out. I know. I know. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't want to say much more about the actual ending. So I know I'm like kind of dancing around this, but it's as powerful and beautiful as this song is on its mm -hmm. own. That moment that moment, the way it's used and its effectiveness, just it got in my head and it just it's just never left. Um, when I was figuring out the songs for this episode, um, I landed on Dynamis pretty quickly, actually, because I'm me. But um, well, I, it didn't take long for me to think about this one. I'm like, okay, that's good. Maybe it's too predictable, so let me not do it. I went through my entire uh, iTunes library, like every RPG song that I have, like thousands of songs, um, and everyone was like, is this one as good of a, of a defining song as Weight of the World? And nothing was. <laughs> so I went with it in the end. I mean, there's lots of good ones. Uh, if you're curious, I was really, I really was thinking about like Red Wings from Final Fantasy IV. Um, That's a great one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um, no. I'll share one of our runner ups. <laughs> I just did. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, Automata is like, has so much. I don't know. There's so much in that game. I mean, there are so many songs you could call game defining because there's just so many incredible moments. Uh, so this is not the only one, but it's it's definitely one of the biggest ones for me. And I just I never get tired of hearing this one. I mean, I think ending E is what defines that game to some degree, right? So I think that it 100% makes sense there. And it's not the first time you hear the song. You actually hear two different versions of the song earlier. Um, and I think that. Um, that is important. I mean, I think that uh, I, sort of talking about it from a broad perspective, like one of the things the game is trying to do at, at that point is trying to get you to acknowledge that video games can be important um, or artistic. And the fact that it starts out with like that very video gamey sound, um, I think is really interesting. It's so cheeky. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I think that it's great to like, it, it's like messing with you. Uh, but like not in a cheap or annoying way. Yeah. But it, you know, you you get the additional vocals, and then you get more vocals, and then you get that choir in the background. And you can only stay uh, unless you are very multilingual. You can understand what one of those people is saying. <laughs> um, and earlier in the game, when Weight of the World plays, like there's a hopefulness to it, but there's also like a despair to it. Uh, yeah. This idea that like my my words are meaningless. Um, but I think this song is triumphant um, because it basically asserts that our words might be meaningless, but we're still there and we still matter. And like all these different people and all these misunderstandings, it doesn't matter if you can understand what they're saying. What matters is you can 
feel what they're saying and their experiences matter and their experiences are real and their experiences are important and you can all come together to do something different. Um, and I think that this song perfectly captures what is special and actually kind of important about Nier Automata. Um, and I think it's beautiful because of that. And I have way more to say, but I will shut up now. No, <laughs> I mean, is... I, I mean, no, no offense to anyone else, but like when I think of this game, I think of you. So I was <laughs> absolutely really interested to hear your thoughts on this. So thank you. This is the second time a song on this list makes West teary eyed. So sure. <laughs> I'm two for two then weight way of the world hits like a ton of bricks. Um, especially this version that, that, that choir the the building up of all those voices like especially in context you can't hear that and not have it hit you um i think it's physically impossible to not have it hit you a little bit mm -hmm. yeah i think i don't know especially I, I didn't find like the hacking segments i'm not alone in this in near automata that much fun uh, they get a little worn out and as much same with bit tunes as much as i love bit tunes uh listening to a whole soundtrack of bit tunes kind of grates on my ear a little bit that said i still love the way the song starts with that with that you know that bleeps and bloops it's very cheeky to the rest of the game and i don't know like around 120 when you can actually for the first time just hear those violins slowly coming in you know the chip tune is fading away and you hear just an actual violin coming in crawling in and then Janique Nicole just, you know, blasts out that one gorgeous line, you know, and kind of just changes the entire texture of everything around you. You know, you go from pixels to, you know, full color, full, you know, resolution and just something that feels a lot more fuller and, uh, you know, both musically and just kind of what I see in my head to go from chip tunes to something more beautifully, and uh, sorry, beautifully orchestrated. I don't know. There's so much texturing in the song. I, I love your description of like describing the the music as going from like pixels to like fully realized. I mean, it, it I can it works. It works. I just think that's a really cool description. Yeah. I mean, and, and what's interesting too is that you're still looking at pixels while it's happening, right? <laughs> right. Um, it's like it's it's saying to you like that pixels this matters, um, and this choice matters, even if it it doesn't really matter because uh, I, I I love that. No matter it what make you, you feel do, so small, right? Like, right. like it's like a smaller technology. It's a smaller frame where you're just this mm -hmm. little arrowhead shooting things, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so and it's... like, yeah. I mean, like your sacrifice is sort of meaningless, but it means everything, right? Like, it's, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I love this game. It's <laughs> and meaningful I think to it's you such... that you made that yeah. sacrifice, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So like this kind of isolated pixel feeling where you're just this tiny little ship and then when it actually kind of, you know, fully flourishes into the full like vocals styling of the song, you kind of feel that togetherness with everybody there. It's like one person playing a little, you know, little bleeps and bloops on a piano to an entire orchestra and choir and, you know, voices from around the world that really, you know, add to it and really make you feel that moment in actuality. <laughs> It's right. a, such a good version. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when Taro talks about the fact that in the original Nier, he was inspired by the Iraq War, <laughs> um, oh. and how and how those same themes are carried forward here. Like, and if you look at what's happening today, right now, uh -huh. in the world, like this is a message that we need to hear. And the way that he uses a video game and video gamifies it in this song is just so remarkable to me. Yeah. Like, I just I want to talk about it for days. <laughs> well sad. But I won't. Well, that's. I was gonna say, it's like that, okay, that's actually the next song is yours, Zach. So actually, that's your segue to make. So. Good luck. <laughs> you know, I, I I could talk about that game for days, but I could talk about this game for days too, um, which is Xenoblade Chronicles Three, which um, as as a video game in general, I think hits some highs that are almost close to ending E. Um, if you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't normally talk about ward stubs, but oh my god, this one was totally like snubbed for uh, VG, the video game awards oh, for best soundtrack. I can't even believe absurd. it. Absurd. Yeah. Like I, mean, I like the God of War soundtrack, no but that one sounded Bear McCreary, so much on, like dude, the other right. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bear McCreary's soundtrack on Battlestar Galactica is amazing, oh, but come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I, I chose Carrying the Weight of Life, which I. So good. It is a fascinating, uh, as apparently uh, Takahashi was talking about this uh, track, and he only uses it twice over the entire course of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and also then the DLC. And if you look at previous versions, this is sort of like the new version of like Counterattack from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. 
uh, where they use counterattack in every single cutscene. Um, I feel like I heard counterattack like 15 times. Now it's a great track, so I didn't mind. Um, but they use it like 15 times in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And they only use it twice here, and I don't think they use it at all after Chapter 4. And it's a 10-chapter ch game. Mm -hmm. um, and before the game released, this game, uh, or this, this track was released, and I think everybody who heard it, they knew what it was. Like, oh, this is going to be playing over all the cutscenes. And it doesn't. And to be honest with you right now, I don't think I can tell you what exactly which cutscenes. I think it's like the end of chapter four and then maybe in chapter three uh, where they use it. But I'm sure some listeners screaming how, how wrong I am. Um, but I, I think that how sparingly used it is, is really interesting uh, because it feels appropriate to where you are um, sort of at the beginning of the game. So like it, the whole song itself sort of tells the story of the game, um, the flute, um, sort of as like Flutes. hope itself. And the flute almost functions independently in the song to some degree. Um, you've got that sort of beginning and then you've got that quiet little spot um, where it's like the two thirds mark and then like where that piano's in and you like feel like that hopelessness and the flute just sort of timidly pushes in. And then all those counter melodies in the final section where the flute is almost triumphantly sitting over all of it. Yeah. Um, totally hits all the notes of what this game is doing. Um, and um, I, I, I think it's also interesting to think about in the context of the other versions of this song, where the other versions of the song are almost entirely triumphant and the flute adds something so phenomenal to this version um, and so human. Um, and it, it feels less hopeful than the other two versions and less triumphant. And that is appropriate for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a more melancholic experience. Um, it's just beautiful um, in the way that it pulls even more sounds together than the two previous versions of the song. And I super dig it. I like that it is used more sparingly. That's actually very smart to kind of, you know, show its, you know, its importance in a way. Less is more. Um, the flutes are absolutely the defining part of it, though. I mean, it was for the entirety of Xenoblade 3. If they don't got flutes, then it's not an important song, basically. You know? <laughs> um yeah, and I like how you mentioned that they act kind of independently, because that's very true, you know? They're kind of like the spice on top, the cherry on top of a good song. You know, this kind of moving factor is the party who plays the flutes, you know? So they're kind of the ones, you know, kind of being the shifters of the song. And, you know, this flute kind of comes in on top as, you know, they're kind of here to change yeah. everything, change their fate and destiny and mm -hmm. all that whatnot. It's, I, I never really thought about the idea that, like, the it's the flutes themselves that almost seem to pull the song back up. Um, yeah, when it sort of hits point. that like really soft interlude, but yeah. Um, okay, so I haven't played this one yet. Shock, um, <laughs> but I've at least listened to the the music on and off of the other games. Um, Is it? There you go. But I I've always liked the music in these games um, that they can really blend like different styles, like orchestral sounds and like just guitars and flutes and all this stuff. And it's interesting that they, they do that. I mean, I know each, each game doesn't sound the same or anything, but you know, the, the composer lineup is a little different each time, but it still has whatever that thing I can't really define is like a Xenoblade sound. Right. Um, but in, in this song, I really like the first uh, minute or so of like, where it just kind of builds up and builds and just the way this the song kind of like ebbs and flows there's like these more boisterous moments and quieter and actually i, I think i was i noted the same thing that zach mentioned too that's like the two and a half minute mark when everything sort of just falls away and there's the piano for it to build back up again but it builds up in a different way like it's it doesn't just repeat itself um it's it's a really cool um, not knowing, not having the context myself, but it, it just, this, this is one of those songs that just kind of takes you on this musical journey, whether or not you have the context. And it's just a lot of fun to listen to. So many of these video game soundtracks that are delivering these like eight minute mega pieces, you know, that don't really repeat themselves. Like they're a full yeah. composition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I the worst part of, of Xenoblade 3 is that, like, the stupid chain attack music cuts off some of the best battle music. <sighs> yeah. Um, Why like, would they do that? Mo Mobius M, Mobius N. Like, those two songs are incredible. And I didn't hear them until the soundtrack got released. I was like, oh, my goodness. This song goes some places, but I didn't hear it because chain attack. Oh. <laughs> that feels like a, like a, what do you call it, director's cut thing that they would change. I, I, I kept expecting them to patch it to, to fix it, and they never right. have. Because everybody complains about it. The chain yeah. attack music is pretty good. 
the first right. 70 times you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and especially because like all these like battle themes have their own resolution to them. Like uh, when you beat the battle with it, it actually kind of, I think it cross fades into like a completion version of the song that blends yeah. into the actual battle theme. So yeah, having it just finished with the chain attack is just so boring, especially if they went through the effort to create these actual resolutions mm -hmm. in these pieces. It's yeah. almost not worth killing a boss that way. I like, um, you know, I, I love that, not to just always talk about 14, but, you know, 14 has very specific options for that. There are certain musical checkboxes really? in the options. Well, because you can disable, like, the regular battle music in the overworld. Because if you oh, have it on God. normally, and granted, for the first several expansions, the regular battle music was fine. Um, it's gotten yeah. better. Um, the last couple, I think, is they're actually really good. But yeah. they interrupt the theme, the area music. And then when it's done, you know, like it'll either pick, does it pick up or does it restart the music? I don't know. It picks oh God, it up. I hope it doesn't restart. No, it doesn't <laughs> it restart. It up. Um, but like, it's still distracting. Um, yeah. So I like the battle music in the last couple, but I love that they turn that option off. Like you can turn off regular battle music and you can turn off like mounted music. So when you get on a mount, it doesn't just like override the other music. So like, that's all they would need More here. More games need that just, kind of a function, just to give, be Just give a checkbox. I'm like, do you want this on or not? Like, no, no, I want to just keep listening to the music. Or like, I want like a dynamic version if I'm fighting something like 20 levels under than me that I'm just going to take out in one hit anyways. No need for battle music. You know? <laughs> exactly. Just no point. It's me, you know, kicking an ant or something. You don't want to, you don't want to hear just those first three notes over and over. But yeah. And especially Xenoblade could kind of take a page from that, to be honest. Like great games, but like, you know, the repeated battle theme could be, especially for a game that might require some grinding. You know, it could be a little, uh, meh. <laughs> It'd be nice to just kind of hear some of the yeah. big theme songs because some of them are so good. These area themes are like, to me, the bread and butter of the series. So it'd be nice if it actually had that in these games as well, where you could just listen to the field music. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You, I agree. You, you have no, way, no idea how many times like we have a topic for rhythm and I'm like, hmm, is it time to bring another area theme from uh, Xenoblade <laughs> X? Because <laughs> I'm like, does this one fit? I'm like, no, no, not yet. Not yet. But I'm waiting. I'm always <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> Yeah. I, I will gladly introduce one next one chance I get to. I didn't know we were uh, in need of some Xenoblade X on here. I just like it. I, I'm just I'm always happy for more. We we've actually had a lot of fun, but not for a while. Oh. Most of our Xenoblade X was like in like the episode like 20s and 30s. So yeah. Well then. Yeah. The game I need to play. <sighs> yeah. One you need a maybe. Wii U. I actually I still have mine for the the. <laughs> one singular reason that i have not beaten or really played much of cross so that's why i have it oh, okay all right i was gonna say like so if, if you want to play it and you need it that bad like i can get mine out of the I, closet I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah i i i guess as a final note on weight of life i just think that um despite the fact that it is not used all that often um it defi i think it is thematically it thematically tracks the game in yeah. almost perfectly and um it ties so many different threads together that I can't really talk about without spoiling things. But um, I, it's also just freaking beautiful. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I like that. I, I love that it can have that effect, even if it's used so sparingly. So that's great. That brings us to the end here, finally. So um, first of all, we're yeah. going to cover all of the games that made their debut on this episode. Sweet Kid in 3. Yeah. Uh, hey. Everything else on this episode was on on the show at least once. Dang. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Wait. We played Lufia before. I might have. I might have lied. No, sorry. Uh, Sweet Kid in Three and Ark the Lad. Uh, nice. We're, we're hey, new. Two for. Yep. Uh, Lufia was on only once before, but yeah, all the other stuff has been on to some capacity. But yeah, both of Wes, both of Wes's picks were new to. Well, I figured if Ark the Lad had been on before, it was probably me again. <laughs> <laughs> I like that kind of consistency. Yeah, I mean, I, I have I have some of those too. Um, not I'm not the only one who brings on Stardew, but like there, there are certain games where I'm like, oh yeah, of course Mike brought that one on. Uh, but yeah, so th those were our debuts here. Um, coming up next on Rhythm Encounter, we are doing autumn theme music. Uh, if if you've been following the show, you know that that was originally going to be this episode. We switched them around, but that one is actually coming next. Um, after Do you read poetry in between? We could. We could. Right? We haven't recorded it yet, so I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll see what everyone thinks about it. Um, yeah, so autumn themes, and then we're going to do, we haven't done a composer 
spotlight episode in a while. So we're doing one on uh, Hiroki Kakuda. So you can expect some Secret of Mana and some other things on there. Uh, if you have thoughts on this episode, if you have topic ideas, um, anything else, you can reach us at music at rpgfan.com. Um, and technically, that also goes to me. So that's also the best way to reach me. Um, as for everyone else, what is the best way for people to reach you, Zach? Uh, you can email me, ZachW at RPGFan.com, or you can find me on RPG Fans Discord at ZachW. All right. And Steph? Uh, you can find me most places online as Dice SMS. I draw pictures and talk a lot of video game stuff. Uh, and you can find me on the website, usually through socials, because I'm the one tending to a lot of the socials. And we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Gosh, likewise, everybody here does such good work. I'm always happy to share it. Yeah. All right. And speaking of good work, Wes, how can we reach Shaw. you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Wes Iliff or on Blue Sky at Lone Weasel. Nice. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you also check out uh, RPG Fans' other podcasts. We have re Retro, Random Retro, uh, Random Encounter, which is every other week. That's usually about new games, um, news, features, other things posted on RPG Fan. So be sure to check that out. Um, our, our other big show, our biggest show, or at least our most common show, is Retro Encounter. Retro Encounter posts every Thursday. Um, as long as this goes up on time, uh, we will have just done an episode on side characters. And then we have a next week will be an episode on essential fan translations. So be sure to check those out. Um, there's always something on there. There's a game journal every month and other things in between. Um, Actually, I guess I, I guess I am allowed to talk about the next game journal, right? So Lucy says I'm usually allowed to. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so November. Don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness. November's game journal is Bloodborne. Um, oh. I, I know everyone who's on that one. Well, Zach, you're on it. Is really excited. Oh, about I, that. I I've already platinumed it. So yes, I. Am oh my excited. god! <laughs> All right. So I guess you liked it. Oh my goodness. It's okay. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right. Yeah. So lots to look forward to on all of our shows. So be sure to check them all out. Uh, you can also find us as Steph would like you to do on social media. We are on many social medias, um, Facebook, I'm still going to say Twitter. I'm sorry. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, we're on, we're on discord. Um, you can find us on Twitch. We have a shop. Actually, I've been I've been talking about this for months, uh, so I'm, I'm actually really excited to say that uh, a couple of days before we recorded this, we introduced a new item in the shop. So it's we're calling it RPG Fan Transition. So it's a it's a design of all the different RPG Fan logos over the, our last 25 years. So you can get it on shirts and mugs and lots of other things. Um, but because it's an anniversary item, we're only selling it through the end of the year. So. If you're interested in that or any of our merch, be sure to check us out at rpgfan.com slash shop. If you enjoyed our show um, or any of our shows, uh, we would love it if you would review and subscribe and whatever else you do on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is you listen. And that is it. Uh, we have a very interesting bonus track uh, ending this episode today. Uh, I, I sent out the poll, well, not a poll, but I asked everyone earlier today, I'm like, hey, uh, who wants to do a bonus track and what do we have? And Wes, you, you suggested something that apparently was a joke, but everyone was so on board with it. We're, we're just going to do it. So uh, what, what is your game defining bonus track that we're closing with? This is game defining in the face of a game meeting the internet and a decision <laughs> being made. Uh, it's somewhat tongue in cheek, but I think it actually fits the idea really well. We are going to listen to uh, Butcher Pete from Fallout 3. All right. And I didn't know this. And I'm, I imagine I'm not the only one, but you said this is an actual song. This wasn't something yes. composed for Fallout in 1943 or 49. Oh, my God. Um, That's I don't know how I feel about that, because I'm like, oh, this is a weird little song they made for Fallout. Like, no, this was a real thing. I'm like, oh, boy, it's a real song. <laughs> That's so bizarre. I sure didn't realize is. that. I'm an idiot. All right. All right. This wow. might be an eye opener for a lot of people listening right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> that, that's that's what we're doing here. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, all of you for being here. This was so much fun. Um, I don't know about you all, but I, I learned a lot, as I always do on these shows. So uh, thanks for bringing all your very cool picks. And we're going to close out here with Butcher Pete. Uh, 
we'll see you on the next one and enjoy put your pete if if you have feelings about this please uh scroll back a little bit and reach out to wes <laughs> bring it <laughs> all right thanks everyone bye hey everybody did the news get around about a guy named put your pete oh pete just flew into this town and he's chopping up all the women's meat
Yeah, and I'm already nervous enough talking about music to begin with. So, yeah. Oh. Whether that's because you take notes, I don't know, but like you always sound <laughs> fine. I'm I'm really happy whenever you're on the show. Oh, I said I said that during the break. No one's going to hear that. 